microorganisms. In addition to plants and animals, there are different kinds of living organisms present all around us, which cannot be seen with naked eyes. These are called microorganisms or microbes. These small organisms can only be seen and photographed with the help of an instrument called microscope. Microorganisms are abundant and found everywhere. Some live alone, others grow in groups called colonies. Microbes can be divided into five categories, bacteria, protozoa, fungi, algae and viruses. Bacteria, these are the oldest organisms. They are unicellular and exist everywhere, air, water, soil and in bodies of other living organisms. Bacteria are found in different shapes, rod-shaped, bacilli, spherical, coxy, curved, vibrio, spiral, spirilla. Protozoa, these are single-celled organisms. They have animal-like characteristics. They move from one place to another and capture food. Amoeba, paramecium and euglena are few examples of protozoa. Fungi, these are group of diverse organisms that feed on decaying matter. They are like plants but do not have chlorophyll and so they cannot carry out the process of photosynthesis. Some fungi are unicellular like yeast, others are multicellular like moles and mushrooms. Algae, these are groups of simple plants. Though they do not have any root and shoot system, they have chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis. They may be unicellular or multicellular. They usually grow well in moist places and water bodies such as ponds and lakes. If you visit mountains or any other forest area, you can see algae on the bark of trees or on the surfaces of rocks. Example of algae are chlorella, diatoms and chlamydomonas. Virus. These are the tiniest microorganisms. Viruses cannot be seen with ordinary microscopes. They can be seen with powerful electron microscopes. An electron microscope can magnify an image up to 2 lakh times. Viruses are different from other microbes. They can multiply and grow only inside the cells of another living organism. As long as they are outside, in the surroundings, they cannot grow or multiply and are just like any non-living thing. For this reason, they are usually called the borderline organisms between the living and non-living. Most viruses cause diseases in human beings. Once the virus enters a cell of a human, it multiplies rapidly using the nutrients and energy of the cell. Eventually, the cell dies and bursts and the viruses spread to the surrounding cells. This process kills many cells, causing disease in the host. Growth of microorganisms As discussed earlier, microorganisms can survive in all types of environments such as ice-cold regions, deserts, hot springs, marshlands, etc. These are also found inside the bodies of animals and humans. The growth of microorganisms require the following suitable conditions. Oxygen. Microorganisms which require oxygen for respiration are known as aerobic. Example, streptococcus, staphylococcus, etc. Microorganisms which do not require oxygen for respiration are known as anaerobic, example, yeast, Escherichia coli, etc. Water. This is the most essential requirement and is available as moisture. Temperature. The best temperature for the growth of microbes is between 25 and 38 degrees Celsius. Sunlight. Most microorganisms thrive best in dark places and direct sunlight kills them. Food. Depending upon the food supply, microorganisms can be sporophytic, parasitic, photosynthetic, etc.
useful microorganisms. Making bread. The process of making bread involves the addition of flour, salt, sugar, yeast cells and water to knead into dough. Yeast reproduces rapidly and produces carbon dioxide during respiration. Due to production of carbon dioxide, the dough rises and the volume increases. When the bread is baked, carbon dioxide is released, leaving behind pores that makes the bread porous and spongy. Making curd and cheese When a small amount of curd is mixed into warm milk and kept aside for a few hours, the milk changes into curd. This happens because curd contains a bacterium called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus bacteria multiply in the milk and coagulate it to form curd. The production of cheese and paneer, cottage cheese, also involves the use of bacteria such as lactobacillus and streptococcus. Making alcoholic beverages The process of conversion of sugar into an acid or an alcohol by the action of microorganisms is known as fermentation. Yeast is used for commercial production of alcohol and wine. Yeast is added to grains like barley, grapes, rice, wheat etc. to produce beverages such as beer and wine. Microorganisms are also used in the production of vinegar, toothpaste, pickles etc. Medicinal Uses Making Antibiotics the medicines that destroy disease-causing microbes are known as antibiotics. Certain bacteria and fungi are used in the production of these medicines. Medicines such as penicillin, obtained from penicillium, streptomycin and tetracycline, obtained from streptomyces, are examples of antibiotics. Making Vaccines when disease-causing microbes attack our body, it starts producing substances called antibodies. These antibodies fight and destroy the microbes. After that, these antibodies remain in the body to fight future invasions. A vaccine is a preparation of killed or weakened disease-causing microbes. When a vaccine is introduced in the body of a healthy person, the body produces antibodies. These antibodies remain in the body and protect us from possible future infections by the same microbe or microbes. Some microbes are also used as food supplements. For Agricultural Uses Plants need nitrogen to grow. However, the nitrogen present in air cannot be used by the plants directly. There are some bacteria and blue-green algae which are able to change the atmospheric nitrogen into other nitrogen compounds called nitrates which can be absorbed by plants. This is called nitrogen fixation. These microbes fix N2 to enrich soil with nitrates and increase the fertility of the soil. These microorganisms are known as biological nitrogen fixers. Environmental uses Microorganisms help in the decomposition of collected wastes such as plants, vegetables and fruits from houses and gardens. These waste materials are converted into useful manure by the microbes. In some villages, all the natural waste is converted into biogas and manure. Biogas makes an excellent fuel for domestic use as compared to wood or cow dung. Microbes also help in the decomposition of dead animals. They are also used in sewage treatment plants to clean the water of natural and organic waste. Harmful Microorganisms Many microorganisms are harmful to animals, plants and humans. 
these can be broadly classified as disease causing microbes food spoiling microbes disease causing microbes microbes which cause disease in other living organisms including humans are known as pathogens these pathogens are present in air water and food some diseases can be spread by direct physical contact with the infected person through air water food or contact these are known as communicable diseases there are other diseases which get transmitted from an infected to a healthy person through carriers of microbes such as mosquitoes and house flies for example fevers like malaria and dengue are transmitted by different types of mosquitoes food spoiling microbes microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria are responsible for the spoilage of various food stuffs the microbes start growing in suitable conditions such as warm temperatures moisture and air they produce toxic substances which make the food unfit for consumption and may cause serious illness due to food poisoning the growth of harmful microbes on food stuff is indicated by fall odor slimy or cotton like growth on the surface change of surface color sour taste or gas formation nitrogen fixation and nitrogen cycle nitrogen is found in many essential nutrients such as proteins vitamins and chlorophyll since plants cannot absorb nitrogen from air it has to be converted into water soluble substances these substances are absorbed by the plants through roots this process is called nitrogen fixation and is carried out by some bacteria and blue green algae leguminous plants such as pea and soya bean have the bacteria rhizobium in the root nodules which carry out the nitrogen fixation they convert the nitrogen gas into nitrate compounds plants use up these compounds for their growth from plants these compounds are transferred to herbivores and then to carnivores when these animals and plants die they are decomposed by microbes the proteins and other nitrogen containing compounds are broken down into simpler nitrogen compounds such as nitrates urea and ammonia some of these are absorbed by the soil and plants others are converted back to nitrogen gas by yet another type of microbe this process of circulation of nitrogen between the atmosphere soil plants and animals is known as the nitrogen cycle